Today, we're diving into the tragic case of Brianna Dennison, a young woman whose life was cut short by a depraved individual. It's a story that shook the city of Reno, Nevada, and left a lasting impact on the community. So, let's get into it, shall we? Our story begins with Brianna Dennison, a 19-year-old college student from Santa Barbara, California. Brianna, or Bri, as her friends called her, was a bright, bubbly psychology major at Santa Barbara City College. In January 2008, she decided to take a break from the sunny beaches of California and head to Reno, Nevada for a little winter fun. Brianna had big plans for her trip. She was going to attend the SWAT 72 snowboarding festival, catch up with some old friends, and just have a grand old time. On the night of January 19th, Brianna and her bestie, KT Hunter, hit up some festival events and ended the night with a late breakfast at the Sands Regency Casino Hotel. I mean, who doesn't love a good 4 a.m. casino breakfast, right? After their late night feast, Brianna and KT headed back to KT's place on McKay Court, just a stone's throw from the University of Nevada Reno campus. Brianna, being the trusting soul she was, decided to crash on the couch. KT gave her a pillow, a teddy bear, and a couple of blankets, and off to dreamland they went. Little did they know, a real-life boogeyman was about to make an appearance. The next morning, KT woke up and noticed something was off. Brianna was nowhere to be found, and there was a small blood stain on her pillow. Now, I know what you're thinking. Maybe she just had a really intense nosebleed. But no, this was something much more sinister. KT started to panic. She called Brianna's mom and then the police. The cops showed up and started poking around the house, trying to piece together what happened. They found a blood-stained blanket on the kitchen floor, and get this, the teddy bear was missing too. I guess the perp needed a cuddle buddy for later. As the investigation kicked into high gear, the cops discovered that the blood on the pillow belonged to Brianna. But here's the kicker. It also had traces of saliva and mucus mixed in. The detectives figured Brianna must have put up a fight, and the attacker probably tried to smother her with the pillow. Talk about a rude awakening! The police and a bunch of volunteers started combing the area, looking for any sign of Brianna. They had flyers, blue ribbons, the whole shebang. She is one of the nicest girls, and if I ever did this, is watching just, she's so nice, just, please, please, bring her back. Bree is 19-year-old Brianna Dennison, a college student who went to a concert and a party in downtown Reno Saturday. She spent the night on a couch at her friend's house, but by early Sunday morning, she had vanished. She wasn't there, and I noticed blood on the pillow, so we called the cops, and from there it's just been the nightmare. Dennison goes to college in Santa Barbara, California, but she was in Reno visiting friends and family for the weekend. Brianna's friend says the front door was not locked that night. Nevada police say they would like to talk to a man who dropped off a friend of Dennison's at the home. Her aunt says Brianna had also gotten a text message from her boyfriend that night. Just awful. They were breaking up kind of stuff, you know, and he just was saying awful things to her, you know, calling her all kinds of names and stuff like that. He was just jealous and young. Authorities say Brianna left behind her purse, cell phone, and some clothing. Dennison's family is not giving up hope, but said they are confused by the events of the night. What scares me is like the dog not barking. Did he know that person that came in? Did they sleep through a dog barking? Why did Brianna not scream? No suspects have been named in the case, but they are treating it as a kidnapping. Camille Bohan in the Associated Press. But as the days turned into weeks, there was still no trace of her. It was like she vanished into thin air. The detectives started digging into some other cases in the area, hoping to find a connection. Lo and behold, they stumbled upon two attacks on female UNR students that happened just a couple of months before Brianna went missing. And let me tell you, these attacks were straight out of a horror movie. In November 2007, a 21-year-old student was jumped in a campus parking lot. The creep put her in a chokehold and started groping her before he got spooked and ran off, 
leaving behind a lovely parting gift of unopened condoms. I mean, who says romance is dead? But wait, it gets worse. In December, another student was attacked. This time, the sicko choked her until she passed out, threw her in his truck, and sexually assaulted her before dropping her back off at home with a charming threat that he might come back for round two. Yikes! The police realized they were dealing with a serial predator who had a type. Young, petite, long-haired women. And guess what? The DNA from these attacks matched the DNA found at Brianna's abduction site. They had a serial rapist on their hands, and he was escalating. On February 15th, 2008, the search for Brianna came to a devastating end. A body was found in a field near a business park, partially hidden by the melting snow. A body found in Reno, Nevada Friday is that of 19-year-old Brianna Dennison. Police confirmed the identity Saturday. Dennison was abducted from a friend's apartment nearly a month ago as she slept on a couch. Police say she was strangled by a serial rapist. Her body was found in a field about eight miles from where she was last seen. Police say it had been there for more than a week. Heavy snowfall in recent weeks may have delayed the discovery. Police say they're looking for a serial rapist who has been tied by DNA evidence to at least two other crimes. In the days after Dennison's disappearance, friends and volunteers repeatedly searched for her, hoping she would be found alive. Matt Friedman, The Associated Press. Dental records confirmed everyone's worst fear. It was Brianna. The poor girl had been raped and strangled, likely within days of her disappearance. But the sick twist in this story, the killer left two pairs of women's thong underwear under Brianna's body, and one pair had his DNA on it. It was like he was taunting the cops, leaving a twisted calling card. The community was shaken to its core. Over 3,000 people showed up to a live, love, and unite ceremony in Brianna's memory, while the police worked around the clock to find her killer. They interviewed hundreds of sex offenders, chased down thousands of leads, and processed countless DNA samples. But the big break in the case came from an unexpected place. On November 1st, 2008, almost 10 months after Brianna's disappearance, the Reno Police Department got a tip from secret witness. Someone claimed that a guy named James Biela was acting suspiciously and matched the suspect's description. Detective Adam Wignanski brought Biela in for a little chat. Turns out, this 27-year-old pipe fitter from Chicago had a rap sheet that included violent outbursts and run-ins with the law. During the interview, Biela was more fidgety than a kid who drank too much soda. But without hard evidence, Wignanski couldn't keep him. That's when Biela's girlfriend, the mother of his four-year-old son, entered the picture. She spilled the beans about Biela's sketchy behavior, his mysterious disappearances, and get this, a pair of women's underwear she found in his car when she was helping him move back to Reno from Washington. Biela's excuse? He claimed he swiped them from a laundromat. Right, because that's totally normal behavior. Biela's girlfriend had a hunch that something wasn't right, so she gave the cops a DNA sample from their kid. And boy, was her instinct spot on. The results showed that the little boy's DNA was a close match to the suspect's profile. Talk about keeping it in the family. Armed with this new evidence, the police slapped a warrant on Biela and arrested him at his son's daycare center on November 25, 2008. They charged him with Brianna's murder and the kidnapping and sexual assault of the two UNR students. And wouldn't you know it, his DNA was a perfect match to the suspect's profile. Bingo! Fast forward to May 2010, and James Beeler is standing trial for his heinous crimes. 
A testimony in the James Bela trial moved on to how investigators piece things together in this case and what happened after the arrest. We want to warn you, what came out today in court may not be suitable for children. Brandon. Okay, well, the video shows the inside of an interrogation room at the Reno Police headquarters. Now, once uh, his girlfriend walks in, the camera was pointed at James Bela in the courtroom because we're not supposed to show the face of his girlfriend on television. We will show you some video of Bela in that room before before she walks in, but either way, once she walks in, you can hear the exchange between the two. Carlene Harmon asked her boyfriend James Bela whether he did the things he was accused of more times than we could count. He never answered yes, he never answered no. What he did say is, I can't tell you. He refuses to answer her question every time she asks it. Bela seemed emotional in the courtroom watching the video. He kept his head down while it played. In the video, at one point, he asked her why she lied to him about providing a DNA sample from their four-year-old son. That sample is how police say they identified Bela as the attacker in the rapes and murder. As the video went on, Bela apologized to Harmon for ruining her Thanksgiving and her birthday by being arrested, we presume. This all happened. Detective David Jenkins said after that meeting, Bela told police, quote, he was evil and hoped his son didn't grow up to be effed up like him. At one point in the video, Bela tried to reason why he couldn't tell his girlfriend if he did commit the rapes and murder he was accused of. She asked him, why can't you tell me? Well, a whole lot of detail about the murder of Brianna Dennison and her accused killer surfaced today in court. And we want to warn parents, you might not want your kids to hear some of it. Yes, we did. And they described James Bela as, first of all, an excellent worker, and second of all, a rather friendly guy. But they say his general mood sort of changed around the late part of 2007, the same time Bela is accused of committing the two rapes in this case. Prosecutors called Bela's former supervisor, John Latham. Latham said on February 15, 2008, after Brianna Dennison's body was found that same morning, Bela quit his job, took his last paycheck, and moved to Washington State. Also that same day, Latham talked with Bela about the discovery of the body. I asked him if how he felt about uh, her being found, and his comment was is that she... And I know there was some colorful language. Say exactly what he said. The bitch probably had it coming. Fence asked Latham whether he reported it to police. No, I did not. He, he always had that sense of humor, and a lot of guys have that kind of humor. Then we heard from Reno Police Detective Adam Wignansky. He made contact with Bela after the secret witness tip came in. The detective left a business card on the front door of Bela's home in Sparks. When Bela called him back, he never asked Wignansky why he wanted to talk with him. They met the next day at a Wendy's. Wignansky says Bela's story started to fall apart. First, Bela gave a false description of the Toyota truck he used to own, and then this. I asked him if he ever left the Reno area, and he said he did not. And, and just moments ago, he just told me he traded a truck in Kellogg, Idaho. That was Kellogg, Idaho, less than an hour from the Washington state border. After three and a half weeks of damning testimony from 60 witnesses, the jury found him guilty on all counts. The Denison family finally got the justice they so desperately sought. On June 2nd, 2010, James Beeler was sentenced to death for Brianna's murder, and he got four extra life sentences for the rapes and kidnappings of his other victims. Celebrating for almost nine hours, the jury brought back its decision about three o'clock this afternoon. Yeah, and that decision was greeted with joy and relief, as you can imagine, by Brianna Denison's family and tears by the relatives of convicted killer James Bela. Bill Brown joins us. And that any mitigating circumstance or circumstances are not sufficient to outweigh the aggravating circumstances found. Therefore, by reason thereof, set the penalty of sentence to be imposed at death. And the counsel will have access to and shortly thereafter, James Bela was led from the courtroom. Now, you're not going to be able to quite hear this as he goes by, 
But right here, he tells his mother not to cry, and he loves the family. I was standing right next to him as he went by. Now, in Nevada, the appeal of a death sentence is automatic. The defense team told me immediately afterward they're already in the process of readying that case. The Dennison family, on the other hand, had shed plenty of tears, and they were tears of joy. Immediately, they began passing out the familiar blue ribbons we so often saw when the search was on for Bree. This was time to proclaim that Bree, in fact, finally did have justice. And with more on how the Dennison family and, of course, the prosecutors reacted after this, I'm joined by Jen Jackson. That was a separate press conference. Jen, what was the mood in there? Uh, Bill, you know, let me tell you, there were plenty of times when there were tears in view and voices were choked with emotion as, you know, so many people address the courtroom. Now, District Attorney Dick Gamick says they may not have been able to bring Bree back, but they did bring Bree justice. And it's the community that so many people decided to stop and thank, including Dick Gamick. Even though it took a monumental set of tragedies, remembering that we had three victims in this community, it brought all of us together and there were positive results. The community came together to help in every way possible. Together we have lost a beautiful, vibrant, and promising life. And a family and friends have suffered unimaginable tragedy. But we can and will turn this loss into something positive and good. When James Michael Bila went, messed with my little girl, he messed with the wrong families, the wrong group of women, and the wrong city and state. And Bridget and the Denison family told me that they're relieved this is over so that they can move on and do some other things. And by the way, the rape victim from October of 2007, Amanda. Well, Amanda's mom was in that press conference today. She read a statement on behalf of Amanda who thanked so many people and Amanda says she's now going to become a victim's advocate because of everything that happened with her case and everything that's come out of this with uh, Bila's conviction and sentencing. Bill. Yeah, it was quite a day down there. Um, Definitely. As a matter of fact, there is one more family that we're going to have to hear from. That will come up for you at 530 and that is the family of James Bila. By the way, there is still formal sentencing to be done in this case and that will be on July 30th, not only for the murder, but for the other three charges against him. We'll be back with more on this at 5.30, of course, reporting live on the James Bela trial for Jen Jackson. This is Bill Brown, Channel 2 News. The Denison family, in their grief and strength, vowed to fight for tougher laws and better support for victims of violent crime. Brianna Denison's legacy lives on through the Bring Bree Justice Foundation, which works to create positive change in the face of tragedy. Her story is a testament to the resilience of the human spirit and the power of a community coming together to confront evil. Brianna may be gone, but she'll never be forgotten. She was a shining light, a devoted friend, and a cherished daughter and sister. Her story reminds us to always fight for justice, to lift each other up, and to never underestimate the impact one life can have on the world. Well, there you have it, folks. The tragic case of Brianna Dennison. It's a heavy one, I know, but it's important that we talk about these things. If you like this video, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. And as always, take care of yourselves and each other. I'll see you next time on True Crime Legacy.